Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining the uh, public relations event with the University of Waterloo Alternative Fuels team. Uh, today, Amanda, who is the communications manager, and myself, the project manager at UWAF, we're going to be talking you through the history of advanced vehicle technology competitions and the impact that the competition series has had on the history of University of Waterloo, as well as the opportunities that we have created for the students, as well as uh, for the industry to you know, partner with the with with the university uh, through this channel. So, hope you enjoy the presentation. Okay. So, uh, thanks for everyone for showing up for the live stream of this our PR presentation. Um, my name is Amanda. I'm the communications manager for UOF, and Assad is the project manager for UOF, who's presenting with me today. So, we're just here to talk to give a little bit of an introduction about um, the advanced vehicle technology competitions as well as the EcoCar Mobility Challenge. And we're really excited to be with you guys today. So, we'll carry on. So, the advanced uh, vehicle technology has, has been around for a while, it's been around since 1988. Um, it's basically been a collaboration between government industry and academic academia. It's been managed by the Oregon National Laboratory and the US Department of Energy. So it's provided a lot of great insight and uh, opportunities to work with those types of organizations in the building of this competition and participating in this competition. It's provided uh, 50 million uh, on average a year per, of cash support to the universities participating in this competition. And over the last uh, 30 years about 93 universities across North America have been part of this and it has resulted in about 20,000 graduates from programs that were involved with this competition. It's really cool. So a little bit about the history of the advanced vehicle technology competitions. Um, the competition series really started, um, these competitions are called advanced vehicle technology competitions and then these are the names of the different competitions that have happened um, since 1988, um, which was the first competition called Methanol, uh, Methanol Marathon. Um, you might see that in the progression of these competitions, we developed methanol vehicles, uh, natural gas vehicles, propane vehicles, uh, which happened to be the first competition that you all participated in in 1996. And um, this competition series has really evolved from focusing on the internal combustion engine by itself and the vehicles at the time to really moving on to developing more complex systems um, with our first, you know, sort of fully electric or hybrid electric vehicles that some of the universities built in uh, the uh, Challenge X competition in 2004. Before that, we're focusing on ethanol, methanol, um, using hydrogen-based vehicles. And then after that, we sort of switched gears to developing fully hybrid electric vehicles, uh, spanning on to uh, developing vehicles um, that had hybrid electric technology embedded within them, um, to the Eco Car competition, Eco Car 2 and Eco Car 3. Um, for those of you who might have been around in Engineering 5, might have seen the Chevrolet Camaro, that's from our Eco Car 3 competition. And currently, we are in the Eco Car Mobility Challenge, for which we're converting a, a Chevrolet Blazer to a hybrid electric vehicle. Why we're doing that is a question that we'll answer sort of along the way. And feel free to ask questions as we're talking through some of these competitions in more detail, as well as history of UOF. But that's really sort of a snapshot of the 30 years of, of, of um, ABTC's sort of a commitment to um, developing future business leaders uh, for the industries of tomorrow. Here's a video that I wanted to highlight and show, um, and I'm just going to quickly pause here and just say that this video really highlights uh, what the Eco Mobility Challenge or current competition is all about. Um, and within this video, you'll see sort of the uh, type of sponsors that uh, we are working with and the type of opportunities that people and the kind of testimonials people have uh, to mention as they have been through this competition thus far. So I'll let the video play and sort of talk itself through. The EcoCar Mobility Challenge will task 12 North American universities to apply advanced propulsion systems, electrification, SAE Level 2 automation, and vehicle connectivity to improve the energy efficiency of a 2019 Chevrolet Blazer, all while balancing factors such as emissions, safety, and consumer acceptability. 
EcoCar is the heart of American ingenuity. It's the best and the brightest. EcoCar has it all. EcoCar sets you up for industry experiences. So one unique aspect about EcoCar is that it really is a collaboration between the industry, between government, and academia. So they utilize the resources and the knowledge and the capability of all three of those segments. The U.S. Department of Energy's mission is to help develop the next generation of technology that will help power our vehicles, provide clean, affordable energy. We can't do that without the human talent that it takes. We see it as building the next generation of leaders. The world is changing, and more than ever, we need engineers that can deal with how it is that we're going to innovate and implement technologies that in many cases we don't even know exist today to have a world that has zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. We are specifically interested in uh, electrification of vehicles and connected and automated vehicles, and we see that EcoCar acts as a platform to train future engineers to be able to work in these kinds of technologies. So EcoCar is really about getting down to the nitty gritty of doing vehicle engineering. So we're setting the course in year one through design, and the rest of it is about execution and testing, validation. The EcoCar program is one of the best I've seen runs uh, organized by the Department of Energy. Uh, it's great for our school. The students that come through this type of program really hit the ground running when they start their jobs. Definitely I've become a much better leader, a much better engineer. I've learned more about you know, vehicle systems, propulsion systems, uh, control systems um, than I ever even dreamed that I would have. You're actually going to be making something that's going to be in a vehicle that will be competing and will be driving. Really, it just opens so many doors. It has opportunities to network, make connections, and learn from people really pushing the industry forward and gives you a chance to help push the industry forward yourself. So, you know, quickly about who really hires from ABTC graduates. I'm going to take a quick second and uh, close my slide because I think people are, are messaging there and I apologize for that inconvenience. But really jumping back in, um, the really who hires a, from ABTCs is, is, a, 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 is, is something that I wanted to talk about here. Um, apart from all the OEMs, um, such as General Motors, Ford, Chrysler, Toyota, Tesla, Nissan, and all these different companies that understand the experience that we've been able to build out of these competitions, suppliers that we work with who provide us with the uh, uh, high voltage components, the software, uh, hardware that we use to integrate the vehicle together, such as Bosch, even 2.3, uh, you know, Whitney, and then TransPower, they've all been able to absorb talent directly out of our student teams uh, into their organizations because we have worked so closely with their hardware and have seen implementations within the vehicle. Now, from the government itself, uh, because of the different swim lanes that Amanda will talk about in a second, the, the, the breadth of the experience that people get out of these competitions is, is really at, uh, 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 on par with the kind of training you can get in your first few, few years of employment. So right out of the school, um, these companies, um, government, academia, as well as software companies get these really, um, you know, uh, state-of-the-art uh, talent instilled into their students that they have put so much energy and time into. And that's really where the uh, key demographic of where ABTC graduates get, get hired into. And, and primarily, this is, uh, this is, uh, 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 this is uh, comprised of undergraduates, but as well as graduate students, such as myself and Amanda as well. All right. So just to talk a bit more about the EcoCar Mobility Challenge itself, this was launched in fall of 2018 for us. We are in this currently the second year, finishing up the second year of four. All right, and then uh, just to highlight all the different place uh, universities that are part of this challenge. So across North America, currently there are 12 North American universities involved in this competition, which is really exciting to be part of because if you look at the map, McMaster and University of Waterloo are the only two Canadian universities that are part of this program. So uh, we really get to kind of represent Canada and work alongside uh, uh, and, work to, uh, and work to be part of this competition. It's really cool. All right. And then uh, it's just our mission objectives from the EcoCar Mobility Challenge. So it's basically just to put into uh, the idea that we are trying to build and uh, develop like 
engineers and business leaders for the next generation who will be addressing the future energy concerns that are, we have as a, as, as a nation and also the global community, uh, especially involving transportation challenges and the global climate like uh, emissions as well. So we're just trying to accelerate development of these technologies and uh, interest in the automotive industry. And the objectives with this would be that create, we're trying to create a knowledgeable workforce that is efficient and uh, is familiar with these mobility systems and for, to encourage people to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, math, uh, business, and et cetera, et cetera, just very uh, heavy on the STEM kind of influence and uh, encouragement. So we're trying to provide training and hands-on experience for vehicle development and design, build, refine, and advancement technologies. Uh, so basically, we're just trying to demonstrate uh, the uh, potential of advanced propulsion systems, vehicle technologies connected in um, automated and other innovative technologies to improve efficiency of energy and the affordability for the consumer at the end of the day. All right, and so as Asad mentioned earlier, we have uh, multiple swim lanes that are involved in this type of project since it's a very large project involves many people and uh, over the course of four years at a time. So on the left side, you can see our engineering discipline swim lanes. So this would be the propulsion system integration, uh, propulsion controls and modeling swim lane, as well as the connected and automated vehicle swim lane systems. So the, those are all uh, working uh, individually together, part of a team, communicating across uh, with each other to uh, build the the systems for the car and then we have the project management swim lane which is a sod that he runs and the communication swim lane which is uh, social media outreach that i would be part of and so they all kind of work across each other communicate with each other and all are working towards this competition and the final outcome mm -hmm. you know really quickly i would like to highlight here that um this project has so many different parts to it. When you build a vehicle that has to comply with all the you know, safety regulations of the vehicle being road ready, um, it, it's not just a matter of putting together a vehicle and taking it out on a test track and just seeing if it runs. It's really a collaboration between the industry to ensure that the people who are addressing the, the needs of, of why we're building this vehicle understand that they're not, um, they will never be working in their own individual swim lanes, if you will, they will be working alongside other engineers who will be doing similar work um, in their own sort of swim lanes that they'll have to collaborate in. And this, this really is an opportunity for a lot of these uh, students to expand beyond their horizons of what they thought they would be focusing on. I mean, you know, just taking uh, propulsion systems alone, it's not just you know, a, a big mechanical endeavor uh, where you uh, develop and fabricate all of these different you know, vehicle components, but also that ties back into how you're going to improve your fuel economy from a uh, propulsion controls perspective, where those teams have to work with the mechanical and electrical team to figure out what the models of the vehicle will look like. And that, you know, trickles back into how the connected and automated vehicle systems are going to look like because they need to understand how the model of the car turned out. And this really is one of those unique spots where you get to you get exp exposure to all these different technologies and you really understand the depth and breadth of what's involved in putting a vehicle of this level together you know that really sort of you know puts us back together to then 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 when people do end up applying all these different you know skill sets and and and, and end up taking all these experiences out what do they really you know develop an understanding of Really, if I were to summarize this, I'd say that there's different, you know, as Amanda mentioned, there's, there's STEM, which is, you know, very important in, 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 in the overall vehicle development process. But really, all of that sort of trickles down um, um, on different levels for the different people involved in this, such as project management, for example, does not only apply to the team as a whole, but the sub teams that really manage their own volunteers and core members also have to apply some of those principles along the way. Uh, to really manage and produce meaningful work. Um, at the end of the day, all this experience that you end up gaining from the people that you work around with, you end up applying in your own uh, sort of swim lanes. And that that is an extension to, to what we want to portray as part of these presentations to the public. And that's where, you know, even I have to go out and outreach to our communications team and, and work with them to really portray what this competition is really about and condense that information. And, and, and you know, that's, 
at the end of the day, your customer is the most important part of, 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 of the development of any product. And that's where your goals as a communications team uh, really come into, come into uh, uh, perspective. Now, talking a little bit about the platform that we have that we're building on right now, the Eco Vulnerability Challenge uh, Vehicle Platform, the current competition. It's a 2019 Chevrolet Blazer. It's a uh, RS model, so it's the top of the line trim. Um, it's it's the best Blazer you can get thus far. Uh, there's been word of another Blazer iteration coming up, but that's not official. But the interesting part about this vehicle is that you can imagine that back in 2018, when we first started this competition, the new competition. Um, we had full access to the underpinnings of the vehicle from a mechanical, electrical, and controls uh, standpoint, even before the car was released to the public. And that's, that's just a testament to, that goes to show that uh, um, the, 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 the amount of um, um, uh, really dedication that our sponsors have that does, you know, providing us with the nitty gritty details of what it really takes to, to put these vehicles together. And, and their support for us and for the undergraduate teams uh, that are involved within this competition with us. Um, so really, you know, just an example of that is, is, is at the start of 2018, we had access to full vehicle mechanical CAD. And at that time, the vehicle had still not even been produced or released to the public. Um, and you know, that, that, that just goes to show how much, um, how much really invested they are in, in, in helping us learn what these vehicles are really made of, what they, how they're really put together and, and, and what do we need to look out for. So, so that's, our, that's our platform. That's what we're building on right now. This is 2019 Chevrolet Blazer. All right, and then just to highlight uh, a big summary of uh, the EcoCar technical goals that we have across the four years of the competition is these little three sections and uh, Asad will elaborate more in the next slide. But the first one is basically just uh, what happens in year one and year two of the competition and is the development of the propulsion systems so we can uh, make improvements towards energy efficiency of the vehicle. And then uh, the second one is about happens in year two, year three, and it's uh, basically just further uh, pursuing energy efficiency goals and uh, mobility as a system for the market needs of the consumer because at the end of the day we're trying to prove, improve the market and uh, the, the needs of the consumer and then the third one is the um, year three and year four and this is basically just providing mobility as a service um, in the target market and having the customer in mind as we work through our goals uh, making sure that it's affordable and is uh, accessible for other people. So really, you know, what Amanda talked about, but a little bit more detail. Um, like, like we said, we work backwards from our customers. In year one, we spent all this time sort of figuring out what our architecture is going to look like, and we define that based on the customer research that we do. It just so turns out that we're competing in the mobility as a service market, which is a market where people will have um, car sharing uh, capabilities where they'll be able to go in a car and select it and drive it away and be able to return it back in a few hours time or a day or two and 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 in that sort of a market you want to have a vehicle that is very accessible and that's where a lot of the goals for this competition stem from um, so in year two we do spend all that time sort of you know completing the vehicle integration stage and developing all the propulsion systems of the cars so and the vehicle is in a state where we can now research on the vehicle and that's where we're leading into year three which is the start of of uh, the spring 2020 term where we officially kick off year three. And by that point, we have had completed all of our year two goals. So the vehicle port system is completely complete. All of our longitudinal cabs, cab stands for connected and automated vehicle systems have been implemented in the vehicle. And we have some level of uh, vehicle to everything uh, based on functionality. Year three comes along and then we spend that time sort of um, refining these systems, but also developing the energy consumption minimization strategies for this vehicle. And we leverage for the first time the connected and automated vehicle systems on the vehicle so that we're able to, um, you know, use the perception of the vehicle to improve on the fuel economy of the car. And then year four, we tie all of that together, all of our learning and all of the features that we put into the car. And then we let, um, we let the we let the customer drive the last year of the develop, development of the car. So not only did we start with the vehicle technical specification from year one, we sort of tie it back together and make sure that the product that we're going to deliver um, is able to meet all of our goals as a team of what is what it takes to develop a consumer accept, acceptable level vehicle. 
Not really, U.S. Glide Pad follows that very closely. It's something that has been dictated, you know, uh, to us by all the rules that have been released to us and all the documentation of what we have to accomplish. Obviously, the feedback loop is very, very tight. Every year, we submit about 10 to 12 different deliverables on different, you know, swim lanes of the vehicle. Control schemes has their own deliverables, so does mechanical, electrical, and then project management and communications. And as part of that, every year, we travel uh, three times to the United States, different really cool facilities such as Yuma, Arizona, and, you know, uh, get hosted in MathWorks in Natick, Massachusetts, and have uh, not only get trained on these technologies, but also to demonstrate what we have been able to do uh, so far. Now, this works. This is a very tight feedback loop, and it's a very fast process. Um, and that's how this competition is, you know, that's why this competition is really the premier competition in America. And sort of pushing the, the boundaries of what it takes to develop a, you know, not only a, a roadworthy vehicle, but also a vehicle that is uh, meeting the future demands of what it takes to develop a vehicle that is uh, uh, going to be competitive in the future. Now, overview of the Ecocar Dynamic events. This is just an overview of what we really go and compete on at the end of every year. And as you can see, there's three different categories here. There's propulsion system focus, there's CAF focus, and consumer appeal. We start with a level of you know, on-road safety evaluation, something that all of the teams have to pass before they can do any of the on-road events. And we have to pass that because the vehicle has been documented very heavily and has been reported. And the engineers there, the people that you saw in the video, the, the directors and chief engineers, uh, spend days with our cars underneath the car. And they check every single nut, bolt, uh, zip tie, uh, well, not zip ties, but P-clamps and different types of standards of wiring that we have used and all the different systems that we've integrated into the vehicle to make sure that what we reported and what we have matches. Then once we're given that pass, then we go into the on-road events where we're you know, measured on our ability of how well the car rides, but also how well the car drives uh, from a you know, torque split strategy perspective. That sort of trickles back, and then once that's done, we sort of focus on the semi-autonomous energy consumption events where we are competing against all the teams who put the car together, but also how well does the brains of the car uh, produce a vehicle that is energy efficient? So we're, you know, measured on our ability to demonstrate that. And, and they're in Yuma, Arizona, where the General Motors proving, proving Grounds are, that's where we are assessed on our capabilities to do that. And then for this competition, there's been a huge focus on cabs. So the connected and automated ecosystems and how that, how we're able to use the perception that has been put in, onto the car to not only improve the safety of the vehicle, but also to improve the fuel economy of the vehicle. Some of the things that you can leverage off of CAS systems that you implement uh, for our vehicles to SE level to autonomy. Um, so we, we, we want to be able to demonstrate that. And that's, that's part of what the equine dynamic events look like in the, at the end of every year. And just to talk a bit about the 25 years that UOFT has uh, been in operation, basically we've started uh, participating in the ABTC competition since 1996, so more than 25 years, and a lot of the people on the team are younger than even that, so it's been around even longer than the lives of some of the people on our team that get to be part of this. So because it's been around for such a long time, we've had more than a thousand students that have actively been part of this competition, and have many of these students are across a diverse multitude of programs, whether it be engineering, computer science, business, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. We've had a lot of different uh, people from different backgrounds able to participate in this. So just like an outline of the timeline that we had. So in uh, 1996, it was our first time that we were able to participate in the AB competition. It was a propane vehicle, and it was um, a Malibu. And then in 1999, we got to work on a Silverado. In 2004, we got to work on an Equinox, which was our first fully electric hydrogen vehicle, which is really exciting. And then in 2008, we got to work on our Saturn View, which was our first electrical vehicle. As, and then we moved into uh, 2011 with our Malibu, and then 2014, our Camaro. And then currently, we're working on the 2018 Blazer. It's a quick point here. Um, as we sort of develop you know, hybrid electric vehicles, we realized that um, using utilizing really large battery packs, apart from be, being a customer-oriented feature, really does not add to the fuel economy of the vehicle. So, fun fact is that uh, the, the 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 battery pack in the Camaro, the effective battery pack in the Camaro that we end up using, uh, is actually ten times larger than the one we're actually putting in the uh, uh, the, the Chevy Blazer. And this is 
This is uh, totally in part due to the uh, uh, smart um, um, algorithms that have been put into place by the controls team that you know leverages uh, a smaller battery pack. And we realize that you don't need a huge battery pack to improve the fuel economy or meet the fuel economy needs that you really need to. And that goes to show that our move towards sustainability and not using you know, expensive materials to develop these expensive battery packs uh, uh, is, is something that we have pursued uh, through the competition. And that's why our, our, our new cars actually has a 10 times smaller battery pack, effective, effective battery pack than the, than the Chevy, uh, Chevy Camaro. And just to highlight a lot of our really sponsors, we have our main ones that are US Department of Energy, General Motors and MathWorks and Math, they provide us modeling and hardware systems that we're able to use for implementing into the design of the car and supporting different capacities with the technical underpinnings of the design of the car. Um, Intel, we have DSpace, Bosch, and then JD Power and Consumer Reports that are the people in charge of uh, safety awards and things like that. So it's really good to have the technical, the, the card aspect, and then also the safety um, aspect for the consumer as well. Mm. Some of these power outages, JD Power and Consumer Reports, uh, you know, when you hear about a card that has won, you know, best in re reliability award or, you know, best in uh, consumer features award, these are the parties that are involved in assessing our uh, vehicles when we go to competition. So having, you know, sponsors like these on board is really, uh, uh, it really, you know, you know, makes you a bit nervous about what you're really putting in the car and how is it going to be assessed uh, when the car, when all the features are going to be uh, released to these parties that assess, you know, uh, production vehicles normally uh, to, to, to compare them and, and assess whether the, the, about the viability of the feature as well as whether or not the feature uh, you know, has been implemented to a level of uh, acceptability of a customer at the end of the day. And obviously, when working with a competition as big as this across North America, it provides a lot of opportunities for the UF alumni, or alumni from across different countries or different universities and countries, I guess, um, that have been part of this program. So, opportunities such as Toyota, Apple, Tesla. Uh, GM, even into Huawei, the um, technical side of things, as well as the computer side. We have a lot of people that have been uh, chosen because they have the AVTC experience and have worked with something, and then uh, like this competition, employers actually do look for people that have been in the AVTC competition. It's a huge, huge preliminary, essentially. And these are our uh, UOF sponsors uh, personally. So we have, as highlighted before, like Argonne, uh, US Department of Energy, General Motors. And then we also are lucky enough to have the Water Engineering Endowment Fund and the Mathematics Endowment Fund to help us go in play as well. So it's a really great opportunity all around. You know, really quickly highlighting, this is not an exhaustive list of all of our sponsors. We have, had a, have, we have added a lot more over the last year or so. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate we, uh, we have sort of not have them on the slides here, but uh, as we work out the details with them, but uh, we're happy to be working with a lot more new, new responsors this year. And maybe in the next year's public relations uh, presentation, we'll get to see those as well. Uh, but this is definitely not an exhaustive list, but a subset of that. And then on the communication side, we've had great opportunities for engagement. We had last year, we had a opportunity with the book guide. So basically, we're just in trying to reach females that are becoming interested in STEM um, and inserting those a way, an outlet to experience what this kind of would be like, um, have one on ones with education and uh, successful interest in the career path. So we kind of um, just try to prevent, to provide these outreach events that we can try and uh, increase mentorship and support of female members that would be interested in joining maybe engineering, maybe UOFs in the future and uh, just encouraging that career path. Mm -hmm. And recently, uh, just a month or month, two months ago, we had the opportunity to uh, be interviewed at the auto show by Trillium Automobile uh, Dealers Association. So that was a really exciting opportunity. You can see in the photo is uh, myself on the right, Asad, uh, Tim, and then Health, unfortunately, is Paul, but he was also there to be in the interview for this uh, exciting opportunity. And basically, we just had 
a great uh, time being able to highlight some of the achievements of UOF. So building a cell, a cell vehicle and a fully hybrid vehicle in the past and uh, highlighting our history, um, exposing our sponsors um, that have provided opportunities and basically just communicating about our technical skills and our experience with our, our time uh, with UOF and the hands-on projects we've been able to be a part of. So if you haven't already, so you can connect with us on social and following our handles. So our Twitter is at UOF or at EcoCar Challenge. And you can reach on the Facebook page of EcoCar Challenge or UOF. Uh, our, so our Instagram is EcoCar Challenge or UOF and our LinkedIn even, EcoCar Mobility Challenge and also on YouTube where this video will be posted if you were not able to be with a live recording. We'll post it as well on YouTube through the U Waterloo um like platform uh, so thank you for that and then uh we'll just say take the time to say thank you and for being here for this live event and we'll to some questions. sweet thanks everyone for joining um yeah we can open up the floor to any questions that you might have just gonna open up the q a sessions um we'll try to touch on them really quickly uh, first is why are you moving away from alternative fuels? Well, uh, we're not moving away from alternative fuels. You've just found fuels that uh, we're able to, uh, 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 well, let me just take a step back. We haven't really moved away from alternative fuels. Uh, we just want to be able to, uh, uh, you, know, you know, really uh, uh, move forward in our, in our goals to improve fuel economy, whether it's through alternative fuels or it's through um, not using alternative fuels, in using one uh, uh, one fuel, uh, such as electrical for, electric, for example. The reason why we use alternative fuels is because we still have a lot of infrastructure that's in place that we still need to leverage and improve on, and and we can only do that if we uh, if we're able to leverage best of both worlds. And that's why we're still using alternative fuels, but we're moving away from that because we found better ways to just be electric. Uh, do you still do you, do you think the skills gained in this competition transferred to more industries other than automotive? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that a lot of the 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 the, the employment opportunities that Amanda mentioned. Um, I'm gonna click this. Uh, Amanda mentioned is um, are really. Uh, uh, um, uh, let me take a step back. So so the the the, the skills really do transfer over to other industries. Uh, some of the skills that Amanda mentioned earlier. Uh, are companies that are pure software or you know are part of the government or other organization or, or research academia and um, they are not purely automotive they are driven by uh, other needs uh, needs from other employment skills and and that's really where where your skills you know in this team does not only apply to automotive but outside of this uh, industry as well yeah and to, uh, yeah and to elaborate on that um, basically working as part of a team as large as you oft is and uh, part of such an involved project is never something that you're gonna not benefit from doing. Uh, employers will love seeing something like that on your resume whether you're in automotive or not. It's just a really great opportunity to work with others and uh, be part of something. So how fast is the Blazer go? Well the Blazer, our, our, our modeling estimates show that the Blazer is able to go um, you know from zero to 16, five and a half seconds. Uh, we're not going to be doing you know top speed runs but really the combined output of the Blazer can stack up to about 450 horsepower which is a uh, which is a pretty beast I'd say uh, for a hybrid electric vehicle and uh, just to give you a perspective the rear motor is 150 kilowatts the front is another 150 kilowatts uh, uh, ICEs and total combustion engine and combined uh, you're, you're looking at somewhere around uh, uh, 400 horsepower 450 horsepower so with the battery packs fully charged uh, this thing can really move now it's an electric motor added to this to the blazer addition stock engine yes that is the case do students gain any extra credits for participating in this competition? By extra credits, if you mean course credits, yes. We also have a fourth year course, uh, ME599, as well as a uh, Laurier-based course called BU481 uh, that Amanda handles that you can yeah. get when you join UWOC. So that's that's definitely something you can do if you join UWOC um, in upper years. You mentioned autonomous vehicle with the car team building vehicle able to drive itself. Uh, Yes, the vehicle will be enabled for SAE level two autonomy. So that includes features such as, you know, adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, as well as lane keep. And those are features that we're developing in-house uh, 
Um, just to just goes to show the type of involvement undergraduate students are going to have uh, through this competition series with the UOC team. How is the theme of the competition decided? Well, uh, the stakeholders and the people who actually end up funding us are the people who decide where the competition is going to go. And it is also backed by the by the goal of producing you know future industry and transportation leaders. Um, and if if the competition is not moving towards something that's cutting edge, then we then 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 the competition is basically you know uh, uh, not something that people will be inclined to join. So that's why uh, uh, the, the 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 sponsors and who are working on the cutting edge technologies for these vehicle platforms they sort of come together and decide where the competition is where the competition is really going to go. Will there be hands-on work this spring? Uh, I want to say yes. The reason why is because even through COVID times, uh, the manager is still going to be, you know, we're going to be trying our best to be in, in, in house and there's going to be a lot of design work. Uh, not as much as we would like in our normal spring terms, but yes, there will be some hands-on work. Where do, you want, where do you see the future of this competition going? Uh, I don't know. What I can say is that there is a much bigger push for connected and automated vehicle systems. So while the initial push was to improve on, you know, the propulsion side of things, let's say we go electric, you know, full electric, then I do see that the competition is moving towards uh, a lot of the V2X, vehicle to everything connectivity, as well as uh, connecting the vehicle to the grid, the rest of the vehicles around you, but also uh, improving fuel economy, leveraging cab systems more than propulsion systems. How much of the work done by the team transports real life? Uh, all of it. That's all I'm gonna say about that. What technical engineering accomplishments are you most proud of? Uh, I'm going to leave this question out in the open because there's tons you can pick up. Seven different sub teams, all different sub teams work together. So uh, accomplishments are really measured by the amount of work you put into the vehicle. So that's a testimony that you'll have to collect from somebody on the team. So come around, join us in E5, 10, 11, and you can talk to you all about our engineering accomplishments that we'll be able to achieve. The car itself is a testament to what uh, you can achieve as being part of the team. Uh, what is one of your best memories at UWAF? Uh, well, that's a tough one, but I'll say all the all-nighters that we have been able to put into the car to make it a reality. There's stories that I could talk about, but I don't have time, so I'm just going to say that all the all-nighters that I've pulled with the team to really bring the car together, or push on the deliverables, that's that's something that uh, I can really look back at. How much time commitment would there be for an undergraduate student wanting to join? Well, <laughs> If you talk to some of our core team members, um, and they're very, very dedicated, I have seen volunteers put in up to 40 hours plus during their normal uh, uh, study uh, study terms, um, you know, on the car. And those are the people who really go above and beyond and get hired at companies like Tesla, Rivian, and Neo, or General Motors and Toyota in their second work terms. And that is, you know, it's it's basically what you what you uh, sow is what you reap, and and that's one of those one of those cases where your commitment really uh, uh, comes back at you and you know rewards you at the end of the day. How old do people usually start participating in the team competition? How old do people usually start participating? Uh, old? Well, they're undergrads, so you know they're between 18 and 19, or they can go all the way up to the fourth year. When did I join the team? Well, I'm going to talk about myself. I joined the team in 1B actually, and then I I, I walked away from the team for about a year. A year and a half or so in the third year of Eco Car 3, and then I came back in the fourth year of Eco Car 3 and never left since. Would it be possible to participate full time this spring? Uh, Peter, how about you message me on Slack and we can talk about that in detail? Uh, but absolutely, uh, feel free to uh, message me about that and uh, we can work that out. Uh, is there training available to a new student even if you don't have background? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, a lot of the time is spent in just training you guys. I'm going to keep the questions short. I'm going to cut it off in about two minutes. I'm going to keep taking questions, but training is available. Obviously, we don't just like, you know, push you in the project and make, you know, expect you to know what to put into the real vehicle. Um, a lot of the people on the team are really experienced and they are more than happy to train you about the tools that we use, but also uh, where the UOF uh, team is headed. What's the UOF Slack? Uh, how about you uh, go to the uh, UOF uh, website, which is uoff.ca, and there is a forum by which you can reach to us, and then there will be a little bit more detail on how can you go about joining the team. The reason why I'm not giving out the Slack is because I don't want a lot of people to just end up joining and not do the minimum you know, safety requirements that we have to go to to let you you know, into the team. But I will say go to uoff.ca and uh, There'll be a link on how to join us and then follow those instructions. And then we are very happy and very active to get you started with the team. 
And with that, I think I'm going to end the Q&A session. Okay, so Amanda, do you have anything else to add? I think this was a big success, and I, I think uh, we had, you know, about uh, we had we had quite a few participants, and this was uh, quite successful, I'd say. Um, I just want to thank everyone for joining, and uh, that's all from me, Amanda. If you want to, you know, maybe wrap up this conversation. So, bas yeah, basically, just what Assad said. Like, thank you all so much for coming. Love your questions too. Uh, the engagement was definitely really there. Uh, I also thank you to Waterloo for hosting us and being a uh, part of this. Um, it was really helpful to have work with you guys on this uh, presentation. Yeah, Thanks. quick yeah. quick shout out to Angle Media as well as the U Waterloo Engineering Group who have been instrumental in, in allowing us to be able to host this and all the people who were able to join. Um, just resonating that through Amanda's words really. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for joining and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah.